This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. An individual can contribute into a personal pension scheme. A registered scheme is classed as a long-term savings plan for retirement and it has special tax privileges. Now, individuals can uh, contribute into their own personal pension plan and they get tax relief on the contributions with the higher of 100% of their relevant earnings, which mainly is employment income, income from their salary, benefits, that sort of thing. Trading profits, plus profits from furnished holiday lettings. Those are the three main areas. You can't include rental income but furnished holiday lettings, they're classed as businesses and therefore uh, that's an allowable um, income for relevant um, earnings purposes for tax for the pensions. Or £3,600 of the gross, any gross contribution. Now, and if an employer contributes into his employee's fund, then they can deduct those contributions from their trade profit and having done that on behalf of the employee, that's an exempt benefit. But it does count towards the annual allowance. Now, all these terms will become more familiar as we progress through the chapter. Two main types of pension schemes. One, two. Now, a personal pension scheme, self-employed. That's their main scheme but also employees, somebody who has a job, may also wish to decide to contribute into a personal pension scheme. It's normally run by a financial institution, such as a company, an insurance company or a bank, and it's available to employed, self-employed and unemployed individuals. They benefit from that £3,600 contribution if they don't have any relevant earnings. Then an occupational pension scheme set up by an employer for the benefits of its employees. And again, those benefits that it pays into the fund are exempt. So that's only av available to employees that work for that company. Okay, so how do they get tax relief? <coughs> Regardless of the scheme, the amount of tax relief available is the same. Okay, we'll get the same relief. However, the method of obtaining relief is different. Let's look at the personal pension scheme first. Now, if you are a basic rate taxpayer, then the pension contribution does not turn up in your income tax computation. We saw that in the income tax chapter. You get contribution by paying the net amount. And it's either the gross amount that you've paid or the maximum amount, which is either that or the 100% of your relevant earnings. So you pay the net and then the government, the pension scheme, contact the government, the HMRC, and get the tax on your behalf, which then grosses it up. Now, if you remember in the income tax computation, we discussed this in that chapter, and it's the net, and then you gross it up by 100 over 80, that equals the gross, and that gross amount is the figure that is then put into your income tax computation. Okay, which means that if you, for example, if you pay £8,000, this is an example, £8,000 into your pension fund. This is deemed to be the net amount because that's what you paid. So read the question carefully. Is it what he paid, in which case it's net? Or does the question say it's the gross amount? So if he paid, for example, 8000 into a pension fund, this is deemed to be the net amount of basic rate tax. 
HMRC will then pay the pension provider an amount equivalent to the basic rate deduction, i.e. £2,000. Thus, the individual's pension fund is increased by £10,000 in total. As the gross contribution exceeds 3600 then the taxpayer will have net relevant earnings for the tax year, must have, sorry, must have, read carefully, read the question carefully, at least £10,000 for tax relief to be available. Higher rate, an additional rate taxpayers, they get the higher and additional rate relief by extending the basic and higher rate bands by the gross amount of the pension contribution. And that again is in the income tax compu uh, chapter. We dealt with that in some detail in that chapter as to how that works. So for uh, recap with that, so if we have a personal pension We get basic rate relief by paying the net amount and we get high rate and additional rate relief by extending the rate bands which are, of course, in the tax rates that are at the front of your exam. So let's have a look at occupational ones, which are for employees only. And then we'll have a bit of a review at the end. So if you make a contribution into an occupational scheme, then you get tax relief at source. The employer will deduct the gross contribution from the salary before working out the tax on the pay as you earn. So you get basic rate, high rate and additional rate relief at source. So for example, if your monthly salary was a thousand pounds oops thousand pounds and you pay ten percent of your income into your pension then that is deducted from there which means you only pay tax on the pays you earn on the balance so that's just an example of how that works illustration here so if an employee has a gross annual salary of 25000 and wants to contribute 1000 into the occupational pension scheme, then the employer over the year will pay £1,000 into the pension. So if you deduct those two, you end up with a net salary of 24000 which is then worked out through the pay-as-you-earn um, scheme. So it's presented in the income tax computation don't forget, you've got to show them both as a salary and the pension deduction. So in the income tax comp, you would write salary and then you would put pension and you would put the two together, show them together. What did it say? Thousand. So that figure of 24 would be shown in the income tax computation. Okay, let's have a look then at the annual allowance. Okay, so although tax relief is available on pension contributions up to the relevant amount for any tax year, there is an overall annual limit for the total gross contributions. Okay, it is 40,000 a year. And again, it's in the rates and the allowances. So please always check. Now, if that 
annual allowance isn't fully utilised, in other words, you don't contribute up to £40,000 a year, and you are a member of a pension scheme in that year, you have to be a member of the scheme, you can carry it forward for three years. And personal contributions made in the tax year will firstly use the AA for that year, followed by the unused from the previous three years on a first in, first out basis. There is a restriction for higher income earners. So the 40,000 is gradually reduced for individuals with high income. It's unlikely you'll get a question on that, but just to be aware that it is gradually reduced. So adjusted income, if you remember, is the net income plus any employee contributions to an occupational scheme, which will have been deducted in calculating net income, plus any employer's contribution to either the occupation or personal pension schemes. So this reduction, just to get this familiar with you, okay. If your adjusted income exceeds £240,000, then the annual allowance is reduced by the adjusted income less 240,000 times 50%. Now the minimum it can go down to, the minimum value allowance that it can go down to is 4,000. We see there a recap of that, where the adjusted income exceeds 240,000 in a current year, the allowance is reduced by the adjusted income minus 240,000 times 50%, and it cannot go below 4,000. So we have an illustration here. Juliet has a trade profits of that, so she clearly has exceeded that figure. Never previously been in a pension scheme. So her tapered annual allowance for 22, 23 is 17,000. How's that calculated? So we have her adjusted income, which is 260,000 less 240, times 4%. And that figure is minus. So this is the annual allowance. And this figure reduces that. Can never go below 4,000, and when you reduce it, it comes to 17,000. So let's look at an example of how this works. We have Aston. Aston made the following gross contributions to his pension scheme in earlier tax years 2021 20, paid in 62,000, 21 22 he paid in 30,000. 22-23, he paid in 25,000. He has an annual salary of 120,000. So how is that annual input made up? Let's have a look. So the total pension input So we have the annual allowance for 22-23 because we always put that in first, remember, the 40,000. Then he has some unused annual allowance brought forward. So let's have a look at the year. So we have 20, 20, 21. 
we have none brought forward for there because he uh, he paid in more than 40,000. So he's used that up, hasn't he? 20, 21, 22. There's 10,000. That was the amount that was unused because his annual allowance that year was 40,000 and he used up 30,000 of it. So that's the balance that's left. Then we have 20, 22, 23. Now we have 40,000, but we've used up 25, so we have another 15, which gives us 65,000 we can have relief on. 